In this video, big drama as juicy new text messages have surfaced in a lawsuit regarding Elon Musk's funding secured tweet showing Elon Musk was not happy with the Saudi public investment fund. And Elon's Twitter takeover moves a step closer with an epic new development. It's rarely a dull moment when it comes to Elon Musk. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla value valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. Here we are over on Bloomberg. New texts shed light on Elon Musk's 2018 spat with Saudi fund. Text messages reveal inner workings of how Musk does business. Quote, you are throwing me under a bus, Musk said in one exchange. Sounds salacious. Elon Musk's short-lived effort to take Tesla private after his infamous funding secure tweet in August 2018 has loomed over the billionaire's reputation and his quest to buy Twitter. Now, a series of text messages that Musk exchanged with Silicon Valley friends, investors, and the managing director of Saudi Arabia public investment fund during that saga have come to light as part of an ongoing shareholder lawsuit from a bunch of weenie babies who are crying because they lost money after that tweet because they were dumb enough to be betting against Tesla stock. And instead of taking the L like most reasonable investors do, no, it's time for a lawsuit because we lost some money because we're morons and we tried to bet against Elon Musk. The texts provide a window into Musk's thinking as he once again tries, nearly four years later, to take a publicly traded company private. In one text message exchange with the head of the Saudi public investment fund, an angry Musk discusses a Bloomberg News article that reported the fund was said to be in talks to take Tesla private. Quote, this is an extremely weak statement and does not reflect the conversation we had at Tesla. You said you were definitely interested in taking Tesla private and had wanted to do so since 2016, Musk writes in a text message. According to a 300 page motion, by the way, if you've got the time, check out the whole thing. There's a link in the description. Filed late Friday as part of the suit. Quote, I'm sorry, but we cannot work together. Quote, it's up to you, Elon. Quote, you are throwing me under the bus, writes Musk. And the head of the Saudi investment fund responding, quote, it takes two to tango. We haven't received anything yet. Back and forth continues. Al Rumian, head of the Saudi investment fund, tells Musk that, quote, we cannot approve something that we don't have sufficient information on and says that he's been waiting for more financial information. Later in the exchange, he also asked Musk to, quote, read the article, please. Musk responding, quote, I read the article, says Musk. It is weak source and still makes me sound like a liar. It is filled with equivocation and in no way indicates it's the strong interest you conveyed in person. If you guys want, pause the video and have a look at some of these text exchanges. They make for interesting reading. The talks with the Saudi public investment fund didn't advance and Musk moved forward with the proposal with private equity firm Silver Lake and Goldman Sachs. Musk shelved the effort a few weeks later when it became clear that many large investors wouldn't go along with it, stunning the financial world with a late Friday night blog post titled, Staying Public. Since then, Tesla has become profitable and built factories in Shanghai, Berlin, and Austin, Texas. The company has indisputably ignited the shift towards electric vehicles and its $1 trillion valuation has wowed Wall Street and made Musk the world's richest person. But the dumb asses who lost money shorting Tesla stock suing Musk in federal court argue that Musk's indisputably false August 2018 tweet and follow-up post on Twitter cost them billions of dollars amid wild swings in Tesla stock price. Musk and his attorneys have been adamant that the tweet to his millions of followers was entirely truthful. Musk's lawyers have stood by their argument that Saudi Arabia's wealth fund had agreed to support his attempt to take Tesla private. The text messages are part of a motion filed by Alex Spiro, Musk's lead outside attorney. The filing includes excerpts from Musk's deposition with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the Short Seller Enrichment Commission, hence this lawsuit, which sued Musk for fraud. The agency ultimately settled with Musk and Tesla, with each paying $20 million and Musk stepping down as chair of Tesla's board for three years. By the way, just to be super clear on this, this settlement occurred without any admission or denial of guilt on Elon's part. And as we've heard, Elon Musk recently disclosing in an interview, the only reason that he settled with the SEC was to avoid Tesla being cut off from getting finance from banks. Had Elon Musk not settled, there would be no more Tesla. Obviously, when you've got a gun to your head, you've got to do what you've got to do. Meantime, Musk has quietly acquired a stake of more than 9% in Twitter, becoming its largest individual shareholder, before turning down a board seat and launching an unsolicited $43 billion offer for the company this month. After securing financing from institutions including Morgan Stanley, Musk spent 
Sunday with Twitter executives, according to a person with knowledge of the matter, suggesting that the company is generally more open to discussing a deal than previously, because no white knight has turned up to save the day. Remember, the Twitter board has a fiduciary responsibility to Twitter shareholders. Elon's offer is well above market price. And remember, Twitter stock has effectively done nothing since it IPO'd about a decade ago. It's hard to justify not entertaining and ultimately accepting Musk's offer unless an even higher bid turns up and where's that coming from? But while Musk says he's lined up $46.5 billion to fund his bid for the social media platform, the text messages from 2018 serve as a reminder that the 50-year-old billionaire can also change his mind. I mean, <laughs> aka, he's a human being. And when angered, he doesn't forget. I think the moral of the story here is, don't f*** Elon. But now more on Elon Musk's Twitter takeover bid. Elon Musk and Twitter are meeting over acquisition offer. Elon Musk is meeting with Twitter executives on Sunday, today, as the social media company turns more receptive towards his $43 billion takeover offer, a person with knowledge of the matter said. The meeting comes days after Musk revealed his financing plan for the unsolicited bid, which includes backing from Morgan Stanley and other financial institutions. Twitter is generally more open to discussing a deal than it had previously been, the person said, asking not to be identified, discussing private information. Fair enough. Again, you have to ask yourself, why would Twitter be more open to this discussion? Well, obviously, no white knight has turned up with the higher bid, so they've kind of got their backs against the wall. Unless, of course, they're willing to consider prison time for f***ing their investors. The Sunday meeting was earlier reported by the Wall Street Journal, which said Musk had met privately with several shareholders Friday to pitch his proposal. The newspaper also said that Musk had told Twitter chairman Brett Taylor in recent days that he won't adjust his 54.20 a share offer for the company. While Twitter has said it's willing to discuss a deal, the board initially countered Musk's proposal by enacting a shareholder's rights plan known as the poison pill. The plan would make it more expensive for any investor, including Musk, to acquire stock beyond a 15% ownership stake. In other words, a clear sign of sheer desperation. As I've said previously, we're going to find out just how deep this insane, corrupt rabbit hole of censorship, suppression of thoughts and ideas, especially in the United States, actually goes. If for any reason this offer doesn't go through, all I can say is it's not a good look for democracy. Musk on Friday made a pitch to select shareholders in a number of video calls with a focus on actively managed funds, according to the Wall Street Journal report. Twitter is still working on an estimate of its own value, the newspaper reported. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Can't wait to see this one. It's possible that Twitter comes back with some harebrained idea. Oh, no, we're worth way more than Elon offered, even though the stock's done literally nothing for a decade. Okay, well, it's up about 8% since it ipo Almost nothing. Worse than inflation. So it's certainly possible that these dum-dums are going to try and conjure up some ridiculous scenario in which the stock is worth way more than Elon's offered, but I cannot fathom how they would justify something so ridiculous. Of course, the only possible argument I can see is, well, we've got these plans and the company's going to be way more valuable when we execute the plans. But if that were the case, you might say, well, hang on, a minute if that's true why is it that you haven't decided to realize some of that future value over the last decade you fucking morons i want to make sure everyone thoroughly understands this point the pathetic returns on twitter stock since ipo twitter stock ipo'd back in november 2013 about a decade ago and prior to elon musk's bid prior to his offer Twitter stock had done literally nothing okay literally nothing if you held twitter stock for almost a decade you would have made fuck all that's a technical term for nothing this makes it practically impossible for Twitter to reasonably, rationally, and logically argue that the company's worth anything above Elon's already high offer. And of course, there'll be a few dingbats ready to argue, what about this? What about Twitter going $70 per share earlier in 2021? Now, just in case you forgot, everything went to the moon during this period and came back to Earth. This was an anomaly. This was a macro event. Entire stock market surging, gross stocks to the moon, then pulling back enormously. So that's not going to be a valid argument either. Twitter can't say, well, our stock price used to be higher. Because you can argue that everyone's stock price used to be higher significantly. It had nothing to do with Twitter, it was just a market-wide move. Since Musk launched his bid on April 14th, shares of Twitter have climbed 6.7% they're still trading nearly 10% below his offer price, indicating lingering skepticism over the prospects of his acquisition bid. As I said at the start of this video, there is rarely a dull moment when it comes to Elon Musk. His lawsuit from the weenie baby short sellers who lost money betting against Elon Musk and Tesla stock back in 2018 is exposing some conflict and tension between Elon Musk and the Saudi Public Investment Fund after they verbally committed they were super interested in helping to take Tesla private, then publicly almost walked back those comments implying they were interested, maybe some talks and discussions, but they weren't committed to doing so. Elon Musk not happy about getting fucked by the Saudis. And it seems increasingly likely that Elon Musk's Twitter takeover will ultimately be successful. Unless a white knight turns up out of nowhere and offers significantly more than Elon Musk, I can't find a way that the board or Twitter executives can argue that Elon's offer isn't in the best interest of current Twitter shareholders. I think at this stage, we're probably looking at 70, maybe an 80 plus percent chance that the takeover is successful. And I certainly hope it is. As Elon and many others have pointed out, free speech is a fundamental pillar of a functioning democracy. Big tech has lost 
across the fucking plot with censorship, deplatforming, banning, fact checking. Of course, all of these fact checkings, bannings, and deplatforming seem to skew in one political direction, which is quite a coincidence. But let's not talk about that. Otherwise, maybe this video might get deleted from YouTube. I didn't say that out loud. I was just thinking, like, hypothetically speaking, you know, certain opinions aren't allowed on this platform. Certain questions aren't allowed to be asked on this platform. Certain facts are not allowed to be stated on this platform. I'm not even allowed to insult large groups of people who believe exceptionally dumb things. Really, kind of strange, but true. And on that note, if you'd like to hear some of my unvarnished opinions on many of these matters and more, feel free to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. Close to 100 hours of exclusive content over there, plus you'll have instant and up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets. So, I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mike Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.